name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So for today, 2nd of December, uh, our uh, saint is Saint Bibiana, um, also uh, Saint Viviana. And she was a early uh, martyr in the early church, actually in the reign of the Emperor Julian the Apostate. That was that um, a kind of last-ditch effort of Satan to uh, reestablish uh, the Roman Empire as pagan, and that was after um, kind of after all the other persecutions. It was a 350, 360. Uh, but that is our, our saint for today. But also, we'll hear a little bit about uh, Blessed John Reisbrook, uh, or John Ruisbrook, as it looks, uh, 14th century Flemish mystic, and then the prophet Habakkuk. Uh, also today, we had uh, Nahum yesterday, Habakkuk is today, and the prophet Zephaniah is tomorrow. So kind of three in a row. Um, let's see. So for uh, Blessed John Reisbrook, uh, as I mentioned, 14th century, and he was an Augustinian canon and uh, wrote some um, quite a few works. Not all of them are still extant, but among them are, were called the Spiritual Espousals, uh, Seven Steps of the Ladder of Love, and many others. Uh, he is, or was rather, a precursor to Thomas a Kempis. Um, John Reisbrook was Flemish. Thomas a Kempis uh, would, would be um, Dutch uh, there in, in the Netherlands. Netherlands and, and Belgium were the two regions then. Um, Thomas Akempis is still doesn't have a feast day, um, but he should. Another one of those um, individuals that is waiting to be canonized. Um, Saint, well, you know, we'll go into Habakkuk, actually. I'll mention him later. So we'll go into Saint uh, Bibiana now. Uh, in the reign of the Emperor Julian the Apostate, uh, and he, as I mentioned, he attempted to reinstate paganism. And so he took, uh, it was a household of Flavian, a uh, Roman nobleman of considerable position. And he was accused of being a Catholic, indeed, because he was, and his wife and two daughters, of whom St. Bibiana was one. And uh, he refused to give up, give up the faith, uh, and so he was branded in the face with a hot iron. And that was the uh, typically done to slaves, is they, they would be given a brand in the face. So it didn't matter what they did, they could never escape uh, being marked as a slave. Uh, well, so viciously was this branding done to Flavian, that he died of the wounds only a few days later. So this is no ordinary branding. It was uh, very cruel. And a after his death, his wife and two daughters, it would have been um, with St. Bibiana and her sister Demetria. Uh, and the, her mother's name was Defrosa. So they, they three were uh, locked up into their house. Uh, nothing goes in, nothing comes out. So um, they, they were there for um, well, some time, a few days, a week or so, and then they took the mother, Dafrosa, uh, outside uh, the city and beheaded her, uh, leaving the two daughters alone in the house. And so they would have been, you know, probably around this time, as usual, in, the, in their young, younger, um, you know, teenagers, early 20s maybe. Um, but but they, they would have been quite young. And so their parents had been killed. Uh, they were alone, locked in their house. And the idea was um, they would uh, eventually feel the pangs of hunger and uh, re repent. Uh, so this is not an easy situation for these girls. I mean, imagine that. Their, their parents are dead. Uh, they're uh, by themselves. The, 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 the prefect, the governor of the city of Rome, is, 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 is orders against them. Uh, how long do we think they could last? Well, whether it was by the providence of God or by the compassion of their fellow Catholics, uh, I mean, who knows? Uh, but they lasted for five months in that house, alone by themselves, uh, praying, staying constant in their faith. And eventually the, the prefect is, is sick of waiting, and so he brings them out, and uh, brings them before them, and the two girls were uh, pretty well on the brink of starvation. And he threatens them, he gives them promises, he gives them threats, he gives them tortures, uh, but they remain firm. And Bibiana's sister, Demetria, um, made a bold confession of faith in front of the governor, and then the exertion was just too much for her, and she fell dead at his feet of malnourishment, uh, exhaustion, and so on. Uh, Bibiana likewise remained firm, and the governor, uh, at this point, you know, this seems to be a, a, a trend, as he grew lustful for her, and so um, handed her over to an evil woman of ill repute, we could say, who attempted to cause Bibiana to fall uh, to the um, sins of impurity. 
but no manner of seduction uh, would, would work. And so this was followed by beatings uh, administered daily by this evil woman, uh, but again, Bibiana remained firm. Uh, so the governor, seeing all of his attempts at, at starvation, seduction, beatings, threats, promises, uh, availed nothing, and he was so infuriated that he ordered her to be scourged to death. So she was tied to a pillar and uh, stripped and then scourged with leaded whips uh, until she died, all the while remaining firm and even cheerf cheerful in her faith, uh, commending her soul to God. Uh, so her body was thrown into the open air, uh, open marketplace, uh, um, to be devoured by wild beasts. But after two days, uh, nothing had touched her, and so her body was gathered by a holy priest and buried. And shortly thereafter, um, when peace was restored, and, and the, the persecution of Julian the apostate was very short-lived, uh, peace was restored. Soon a chapel was erected over the spot of her burial, and then later a magnificent church. And so thus, thus uh, the, the glorious martyrdom of her and her whole family, her parents and her sister. And so now uh, I would like to speak a little bit about the book of Habakkuk. It's short, only three chapters. But, um, you know, as always, all the scripture is profitable uh, for our instruction, for our edification, for our learning, all of scripture. And so we're going to see that this little little book, this minor prophet, as they're called Habakkuk, has uh, major wisdom we can gain. Now, his era in which he uh, prophesied was uh, right before the fall of uh, Jerusalem, either, either right before or right after. And this is when... Um, uh, the Israelites had already been taken into captivity, and then Judah as well uh, was uh, also fell to captives and was was take, carried off into the Babylonian uh, captivity. So the prophet is is uh, begins chapter one begins with a complaint to God, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen, or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. The law becomes slack, justice never prevails, the wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. And so he's complaining, Lord, when will you save us? And it's, it's either a lament over either the case before the fall of Jerusalem or, 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 um, or, or it is right before, uh, but it is, there is no justice. Uh, the, the wicked are in charge, the wicked are the ones in, in uh, controlling the laws. And, and it never prevails. You know, Lord, when will you save us? Now, what happens? Is Judah saved? No, they're not saved. Uh, they go into captivity. Things become worse. And not only do they become worse, uh, they become worse by a nation more evil even than Judah itself, even than Israel. Um, look at the nations and see, be astonished. A work is being done in your days that you would, that you would not believe if you were told. For I am rousing the Chaldeans a fierce and impetuous nation who march through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. Dread and fearsome are they, um, and so on. Uh, so the, the Chaldeans were in uh, an unjust nation, a greedy, vicious, seeking to control that which was not their own. And this was the punishment. Is, why is this? Why is the, the reward for those who are calling for salvation? The reward is to be conquered by a nation even worse. We will see. Oh, and the other interesting thing is that's all chapter one. Chapter two is um, that the Chaldeans themselves are going to be punished. Is that there are, it says, uh, God himself says, uh, I am rousing the Chaldeans, a fierce and impetuous nations. So God is going to send the Chaldeans, but then he's going to punish them for being sent, so to speak. He says to them, because you have plundered many nations, all that survive of the peoples shall plunder you. Because of human bloodshed and violence to the earth, to cities and all who live in them. Alas for you who get evil gain for your house, setting your nest on high, to be safe from the reach of them. Um, alas for you who make your neighbors drink, pouring out your wrath until they are drunk. Uh, you will be sated with contempt instead of glory. Drink yourself and stagger. The cup of the Lord's right hand will come around to you, and shame will come upon your glory. Now, what is the answer to all this? This is confusing. Uh, we find in chapter 3 uh, that Habakkuk speaks of the Lord, uh, that the Lord, the Lord is a just judge of all. The Lord is um, um, the control of the earth. He is the one who splits the earth 
uh, who um, the mountains saw you and writhed, the torrents of water swept by, and the deep gazed forth its voice, the sun raised its hands, the moon stood exalted in its, in its place. Yeah, all of creation right, trembles in the presence of Almighty God. And um, back in chapter 2, Habakkuk says, uh, There is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. This is why the prophets are or seem confusing. Right, so so what, what is the answer to all this? Uh, the answer is, uh, if the church of the Lord, right, if the Lord's people is going to act like all the rest of the nations and be unjust and evil and wicked and pervert the ways of the Lord, they will no longer be protected. And, and the Lord is going to remove his protection and allow those other wicked nations to plunder it. So because God does, God protects his people when they are faithful to him. And when they stop being faithful, he stops protecting them. So that is what it meant. Like when God says, I will send the Chaldeans, it's not that he's sending it. It's that he's allowing them to attack um, with, without, with no protection. Uh, and that's evil, right? Those nations should not be doing that. And that is why after, um, uh, and so, so when the wicked are punished, uh, the wicked of Jerusalem, uh, those are the ones who get it the worst. That's why the, the meek shall inherit the land, is that those who are of no consequence, that's not what the world is after. The world is not after those meek and humble and um, patient ones who are faithful. They're after money and power and so on. And so when the rich and powerful in the church become so wicked that God allows the church to be captured, those are the ones who, who suffer the most. Uh, even though, yes, we are suffer, suffer too, those are the ones whose, whose glory is shamed, who have their, their, their riches plundered and so on. Uh, but then after that, right, after the world has plundered the rich ones of Jerusalem, the rich ones of Israel, then God punishes them uh, and sh and, 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 um, uh, for their transgressions and their wrongdoings, and that is when the meek inherit the earth. Right? And then justice is restored, even as happened in uh, Babylon. So the, the rich, uh, the wicked, corrupt ones of Jerusalem were carried off into Babylon. They were killed. They were slaughtered uh, because those, those were the threats. And once they were taken out, yes, the faithful people had to suffer, but when Jerusalem was restored, it was the faithful who were placed back in control, right? And, and, and that, that's how God very often works. Um, so, you know, that would be good to remember. Let's go back to the story of St. Uh, Bibiana. Um, you know, it, we shouldn't think that, that like, it, it, she herself and her sister were praying to God for deliverance, and it didn't happen, right? It wasn't like they were in their house with their mother, their father had just been killed, and like, oh, we'll be okay, we'll be fine, we'll be fine, God will save us. He didn't save them, right? If, if that's how what we think, if that's what we think, like, oh, you know, Jerusalem, the, the Chaldeans are coming. Oh, we have to pray. We have to pray, you know, that God will save us. He didn't save them. They got plundered. People were killed. They wanted to exile. It was, they were destroyed. Uh, we have to be prepared to suffer that. We have to be prepared that that is going to be God's will, right? We have to think that just because my life ends doesn't mean the universe has ended. Oh, God didn't save us. God didn't save our nation. God didn't save my family. Therefore, the, the, the church isn't true. God doesn't exist. How does that follow? Uh, so we have to expand our idea of what salvation means, right? Remember, um, uh, Psalm 21, which prophesies of the death of Christ on the cross, it says, you will not leave my, or that, that's a different one. Um, it says, you will not, uh, uh, you will save me, right? The Lord will rise up. He, he will save my soul from hell and, and from death. He's talking about eternal death. Um you know, it, it's the spiritual death. It's not the physical death. It's not physical defeat that God is going to save us from. It's spiritual defeat. And, and that's why it says that the, the martyrs win a crown. They were defeated physically, but spiritually they are victors. That's, that is the lesson of St. Bibiana. For five months, she and her sister were stuck there praying. What did they think for five months? That God's going to come and save us. Somebody will save us. Oh, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. If that was their idea, they were going to be disappointed. They would have lost their faith. Right? When, when salvation, physical salvation didn't come. But they knew that. They were ready to give their lives to Christ, and indeed they did, faithful to the end. Same thing with the Jew, Jews in the Babylonian captivity. Okay, we are suffering justly for, 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 the, for our sins and the sins of our fathers, as, as Daniel says in, in the, book, the book of Daniel. Uh, but wait for it. If it seems that the Lord is delaying, wait. There is a time appointed, and in the end, he will triumph. Whether we see it or our children see it or our great-great-grandchildren or whatever, it's going to come. And that's what we have to do. Be faithful to the end. Uh, so let us um, 
Uh, pray for that grace. Let us keep that in mind and not think that we have to see salvation. We don't have to understand how it could possibly come about. Uh, God knows what he's doing. We just trust him and leave it to him. We do the best we can right now. And we're going to do that through the intercession of the saints, through their prayers, and uh, fidelity to our state in life. Uh, so St. Uh, Bibiana, uh, the prophet Habakkuk, uh, Blessed John of Rosebrook, and all saints, pray for us. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost.